What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we are going to talk about the most underrated budget travel destinations in the world. So if you're looking for budget travel destinations, that's what this one's going to talk about. We're going to go quick. So if you got a pen and paper or if you're really good at taking notes, either do it mentally or write it down. But I'm going to give you a pretty thick list here of places that I've been that really don't always come up on every list. Some of these are going to be popular places like you're going to hear about Vietnam, you're going to hear about Thailand, uh, but the other ones are going to be kind of off the cuff that I've been to. People think they're dangerous and I'm going to give you my opinion on all that. So that's what we're going to talk about here. All right now I'm showing you around Thailand. Thailand is actually one of those places you can get accommodation pretty consistently under $50 a night for your own personal room anywhere you go in Thailand, whether it be in Bangkok or Koh Samui or Phuket. Uh, PP Islands, Krabi, you know, you're going to get all of that from You're going to get all of that in Thailand, but it's not the only place where you can get under $50 a night hotels to yourself. We're talking nice rooms, sometimes even bungalows right there on the beach. Something like that, if it was in Florida or if it was in California, is easily $250, even if it's like a rundown Motel 6. <laughs> so you can get really good uh, opportunities with travel going around the world, especially leaving your first world accommodations and seeing what else is out there. So thanks to everyone who's tuning in here. If you're tuning in, hit the like button. We already got some likes. Also, I want to say thank you to our new channel members uh, who've also been signing up uh, to do that, supporting this channel. Uh, we've got a 99 cent option. That's just uh, basically if you're our channel member, then we uh, shout you out when you give a comment. We also do better to respond to you and it has a little badge so that helps us know who you are when you're supporting this travel channel. Let's get into this list here as we're driving going around Thailand. Okay, so the first country on the list that we're going to talk about is India. So we just went to India in 2022 and my experience with India is incredibly cheap. You can eat chow like lunch, dinner. Uh, you know, for under $3 pretty consistently, sometimes even for 50 cents. Uh, so I would say India is definitely one of the most underrated travel destinations. Some of the places that I went was Goa. I went to Mumbai. I also went up here to Uttar Pradesh, which is where Rishikesh is. And you're going to get a really cultural experience, something out of this world like you've never seen before. But India is super cheap. You could backpack and spend over a month in India probably for less than $2,000 if you're a really penny pension. So for someone who wants to go on like a backpack walk about a spiritual journey or something to just kind of break the mold and get out there and live a little like I like to do, um, then yeah, you're going to want to go to a place like India where you can go to so many different places. That some people would say it's not safe, but I didn't have any issues. And I didn't have any issues with scammers either the whole time I was there for two weeks. So. Uh, I would definitely recommend India. The next place on the list that's really coming up quite a bit when I was in Southeast Asia is Laos. So when I was over there in like Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, they kept talking about Laos. Like everyone in all the night markets, all the backpackers, they were like, you got to go to Laos. It's more, it's cheaper than Thailand. It's just like Thailand. It is a communist country. So keep that in mind. Thank you to everyone who's already hit the like button, by the way. And, uh, let us know who's tuning in here so I know who's out there in the audience. But yeah, Laos is definitely one of those places that has come up on the radar as a very cheap travel destination. Another place you can do uh, several, I would say three weeks you could do in Laos. But the cool thing about this area is Vietnam is right here, Laos, and then Thailand. So you could really just kind of start. Let's just say you wanted to plan a trip. You could start down here in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. And you can take the train or whatever way you want. The flights in uh, Vietnam were like $39 to go from like Ho Chi Minh to uh, Nha Chang right here. Uh, I took the train though from Ho Chi Minh City to Nha Chang. And then once, if you wanted to get up to Hanoi, you could, but Hanoi was, you know, it's, it's a good place actually. But you could eat, then from there you could cross over into Laos. Now the area that I really enjoyed was this Golden Triangle which is actually kind of, it borders with Myanmar, Myanmar, which I'm not necessarily recommending Myanmar because every time I talk to someone about going to Myanmar, which is known as Burma, they always suggest it against going to Myanmar. But that's why I'm not recommending that. And I'm also not recommending Cambodia. Every, a lot of these travelers are always like, go to Cambodia. But every time I'm in Southeast Asia and I hear about an incident, 
it's typically happening in Cambodia. Like I had a guy tell me that he got held up at knife point, uh, you know, in Cambodia. He said he'd been going to Cambodia and he got, I'm not saying that can't happen in other places, but Cambodia, it seems like I've heard more incidents happening there than anywhere else. So Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand. But this Golden Triangle area where Myanmar and Laos is, that's right here. So you'd have to actually go up through the north. The capital is uh, Venetian. I can't even say it correctly. Uh, hey, RC, what's going on, man? Good man, RC. And DJ Pollywood out there in California or uh, Florida, actually. Where are you living at, RC? Um, all right, so th these are the places that I really like. Vietnam, Laos, Thailand. If you can do a Southeast Asia trip, that's... You're gonna, you're just gonna feel so enriched. You're gonna feel happy. Like your soul is going to smile. Very, very few times do I, do I hear people that go to these countries that don't enjoy it. Now, I will say Thailand is still gonna be two times, two to three times better than Vietnam or Laos. A lot of people really love Vietnam, but Thailand, nothing beats Thailand. Okay. Now, while you're in Southeast Asia, there is one destination in. Indonesia that is really hard to pass up a very cheap place also again those under $50 a night hotels under $30 a night how's it going Tanya G nice to see you here and yeah Mark what's up man and so Bali we've got a video on this channel from Bali it actually did really good uh, I think we got like over 2 million views this 2.7 million views on this Bali Indonesia Thailand I mean, that tells you how popular it is in Bali. 2.7 million views, that's like our best video ever. <laughs> um, so, Bali's really popular. I mean, it seems like everyone's starting to find out about it. I don't know if you can necessarily call it underrated, but for a lot of Americans, they have no idea what exists on the other side of the horizon. <laughs> you know? Um, so, actually, a lot of our viewers were from India. So, uh, most of our viewers weren't even American. A lot of Americans have no idea about Bali. A lot of Aussies do. But in this area, you have Bali, you have Lombok, and you have West Nusa Tenggara. Now, Indonesia in general is just an incredible place. I think it has over 7,000 islands, maybe 11,000. I think Philippines has 7,000. And really, if you look at it, if you just remove the borders here, Philippines and Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, they all seem like they're all just like interconnected islands, right? They're called the Greater Sunda Islands. You have the South China Sea region, the Philippine Sea. All those islands, if you can explore any of those, it's quite the experience. I mean, this is the stuff that Robinson Crusoe, you know, that you read about in books. That's really what you're going to get uh, in these islands. But Bali, definitely put that at the top of your list. This is for people who are new to travel also. I would definitely say Bali and Thailand, start there. Now, in Philippines, obviously, this is another very affordable place. Surprisingly, Manila is one of the most expensive cities in Asia so the best thing to do when you get to Philippines land in Manila and leave Manila you don't really need to hang out in Manila I mean unless you like big cities you could go to Bonifacio Global City or Makati but those are just big city environments I mean for the price you pay in Manila you might as well just go to Singapore or Hong Kong and have a better experience Manila Philippines is good if you go to Cebu if you go to Negros Occidental if you go to I mean, I went to Mindanao, although there's, there's, there's an extreme travel advisory for Mindanao due to Abu Sayyaf uh, terrorism. But when I went down to Mindanao, I went to Davao. That's where uh, uh, Rodrigo Duterte is from, the president or the former president. I didn't have any issues in Davao City. I even went to Island Garden, city of Samal. But if you go on the U.S. State Department uh, website, it says, uh, highly recommend do not travel down there. But... Mindanao is a very beautiful place, so I'm not going to recommend going there just because of that travel advisory, but I did. I personally really like Bohol and Ponglao. These are affordable. There's a place in Philippines that's very popular. It's called Boracay. Now, Boracay is like the premier destination in Philippines uh, for travelers between Palawan and Boracay. But Boracay is really expensive and really overcrowded. If you wanted the same kind of experience on a budget with less crowds, go to Ponglao right here next to Bohol. The cool thing about Bohol here is this is actually where those little tarsiers are from. Those little, small, little, I don't know, like mini koala bears or sloths mixed with like a monkey. It's like a three, it's like three in one. And they're like this big. They're called tarsiers. They're the cutest little animal ever. But yeah, that's, that's in Bohol. So you can get all that when you're out there. Now, um, no, 
What's going on, TX, man? All coin buzz and Tanya from... Pa what about Pal Palawan? Palawan's in Philippines. It is definitely a very nice place. I uh, would recommend going to El Nido, but it's, it's one of the most popular places now. But Boracay gets just about as many tourists, and it's way smaller. So if you could go to Palawan, I would recommend that. But I like Ponglao, if you can get out there. Also, Surigao del Sur. Uh, this is in Thailand. This is one of those fireworks stands. This is actually Phuket City. Uh, but typical Thailand, this is what you're going to get when you're out there. Good food, all that stuff. Now we're going to keep on going. I got a whole list here. We're actually moving over towards Latin America. Oh, no, Alexa. Wow, Alexa just turned on for some reason. All right, so Mexico. Now, people who go to Mex, no, Alexa. <laughs> All right, so when you go down to Mexico, there are a couple places that are expensive nowadays. Like people are going to Cancun, they're saying, if I wanted to pay those prices, I would just go to Miami. So Cancun has become very expensive. But if you do go to the Yucatan, you know, Playa del Carmen, you can still find cheap accommodation. And I actually prefer Playa del Carmen over everywhere else, including Cozumel. Like if you were to talk about the four areas in the Yucatan or in Quintana Roo, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, and Cozumel, I would say maybe consider Porto Morales. Acamal is too much of a tourist destination, but uh, Playa del Carmen is where I would headquarter out of. And Mexico does have some cheap places down in Oaxaca, in particular, this area called Puerto Escondido, all the way down to Hulatoco. So you have Mazunte, and then you have Hulatuco. Hulatuco. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, it's in Oaxaca. <laughs> so it's right here. In the, in the south, near Oaxaca, definitely recommend getting down there. They have some nice beaches. Pacific Ocean beaches are different than Caribbean beaches or Atlantic beaches. So do keep that in mind. The sand's like a more uh, muddy kind of sand. Uh, whereas the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean has more of that white uh, silica sand. Now, aside from Mexico, we already know about Mexico. Mexico is, is a good place to go for tourism, especially in the small towns. I mean, you'll find some good vibes. Guatemala. Uh, I went to Guatemala. There was also a U.S. travel advisory saying don't go to Guatemala. So, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the safest place because there is a U.S. travel advisory for Guatemala. But I went down there and I was impressed. Um, I went to a place called uh, Lake Lake Atitlan, okay? And I went to Panajahal right here. But there's all these little uh, areas around here, these villages around the lake. This is three different volcanoes. They have Vulcan San Pedro and a few other volcanoes. Really amazing. The road out there is incredibly windy from Guatemala City, so you would arrive in Guatemala City. They have another town out there that I did not quite go to. It's uh, Quetzale Tenango. Okay? Quetzale is the bird. So uh, down there in Guatemala, they love the green bird called the Quetzales. That's why everything's named after Quetzal. <laughs> and even the money is called the Quetzales because the Mayan people have a reverence for the color green and the bird is green. So green's like a very sacred color. I'm not gonna go too much further into that because I'm not too well versed on it. But if you go just a little bit further north of uh, Guatemala, there's an area here that every time I go to Mexico, all the Mexican people, like people from Mexico, they're always like, go to Chiapas, go to Chiapas. And Chiapas is just south of uh, Oaxaca, but it's just north of Guatemala. So this is an area that people talk about probably more than like when you're talking to locals in Mexico, everyone's saying go to Chiapas and it's the far south. It's right next to Quintana Roo and they do have quite a bit of Mayan stuff going on around here in uh, Chiapas as well. But really the land of the Mayan people is Guatemala. Uh, that's where I came across the most authentic Mayan culture. Uh, I would say Mexico up here more like um, not necessarily Aztec. There's, a, there's another Native American tribe. Maybe someone in the audience can help me out. Um, oh, man. There's another tribe. They, ha they have the statues in Veracruz. Oh, man. I'm drawing a blank right now. I know who they are, but I can't remember. They have the big heads. The <laughs> Come on. Someone in the audience. Maybe RC can help. RC says, still hanging out in Kirkland, Washington. Nice. Um, no, not the Purachipa. It's, um, it's like one word. It starts with an O, I want to say. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving on here because I don't want to spend too much. No, not the Inca. They're in Peru. Um, dang. But thank you for the thank you for trying, I would say. Okay, so we're going to move south now to a more 
interesting place. So you have Costa Rica. Now, a lot of people think Costa Rica, because it's Latin America, Olmec. Yes, the Olmec. There you go. Tanya hit it on the head. It's the Olmec. Anyway, that's what that's what I would say is more predominant in Mexico, whereas Guatemala is more uh, Mayan. So you have Costa Rica. Now, it's expensive in San Jose. San Jose is way more expensive than it ever should have been. But I did find areas where I was able to save money in Costa Rica, and that was around like Uvita. Uh, they call it Uvita, which is the whale tail, Marino Bolina. And that's because they say that looks like a whale tail. That little point. It's really beautiful down there. Lots of animals, of course. But Bolina is a whale in Spanish. And I think in the summertime and other seasons, they do get quite a bit of whales migrating down here and hanging out. Now, the further south you go, it actually gets more cheap and more beautiful. This area called Corcovado, very beautiful. So this is underrated places in Costa Rica. Most of the time when people are going to Costa Rica, they're going up here to Papagayo. So they go up here to... You know, all these places around uh, right here, Playa Flamingo, Papagayo, Tamarindo. Uh, there's Tamarindo right there. And then I think another place that's become extremely popular these days is called, uh, where's the most popular? There's a, there's a new place that just went, that's just going absolutely bonkers with tourists. It's not, Samara was a place that I was told to go to, but I never went there. Um, hmm. Can't remember the place. It was right there on the beach though. But anyway, another place you can go where they're going to have cheap accommodation and a great experience. This is an interesting place because there's five places in the world where there's the highest concentration of centurions. Now, a centurion is someone to, who lives to be over 100. So there's, in per capita, in comparison to the amount of people who live there versus the amount of people who live to be 100, percentage-wise. This is one of the places on planet Earth where people have the highest concentration of centurions. It's called the Nicoya Peninsula. There's five places. The other ones are Okinawa, Japan, Loma Linda, California, um, uh, Sardinia, Gre or Sardinia, Italy, and an island in Greece. So there's something in the air out there in uh, Nicoya Peninsula that makes it a very nice place. So if you can get down to Nicoya Peninsula, you're going to save money and you're going to have a great experience. There's also a a wildlife, wildlife reserve right here called Cabo Blanco. I saw so many different wild animals in that little forest right there. It looks it looks innocent from the from the air, but once you get down there, you're like, whoa, man. You almost think there's like a jaguar stalking you. It's so thick in that jungle, I tell you. And there's lots of howler monkeys. Those howler monkeys are loud. It sounds like they're just going crazy in the woods when you, when you wake up in the morning. Anyway, it's still cool. Yeah, Okinawa and the Mediterranean, but Nicoya Peninsula right here in Costa Rica is one of those other places. So now we're going to move uh, a little further south. Now, uh, believe it or not, I didn't find uh, South America to be very affordable. You would think South America would be more affordable. I went to Chile, I went to Argentina, I went to Uruguay, I went to Brazil. Uh, I did not feel like I was saving money. I also went to Peru. I didn't feel like Peru was saving me too much money, although it was cheaper than everywhere else. But there was one place that did catch my attention as being affordable, and that's Colombia. Now, I'm not going to recommend Venezuela for obvious reasons. If you don't know what's going on with Venezuela, then that's okay. You just don't worry about going there. <laughs> but I found Colombia to be very affordable. Uh, in particular, Medellin, I found to be a nice, pleasant experience. But there was some other areas around Medellin that were also worth checking out because it's beautiful countryside. And they have this place called Guatape where Pinol is. For those of you who watched our video about the top 50 travel destinations in the world, we actually recommended that you go to Guatape. It's this huge rock. If you haven't already seen that video, best travel destinations in the world, you can watch it here. We even did a part two. So part one and part two right here. And I've actually put the world's best list right here on the top of the page. Best islands to travel in Greece, best Thailand uh, travel videos are travel places as well. This is pretty much the creme de la creme if you're looking to travel. I mean, there's not too many there's not too many lists out there that are going to give you this kind of information, in my opinion. And the reason I made it this way, or the reason we put it together this way, is because this is how we were looking to travel. I've been to 71 countries. I've got a long way to go to get to all the countries in the world. But 71 countries, I mean, I've got enough. Uh, experience at least to get out there and travel. Yes, Jane, Ecuador is a very nice place. It's also affordable. I've actually never been to Ecuador though. I want to go to the Galapagos Islands. That's one of the ones. 
That's one of the ones in South America I have not been to. I haven't been to Ecuador. I haven't been to Guyana, French Guyana, Suriname, or Venezuela. But I went to everywhere else. But that's because the rest of South America is very big. Anyway, so I have heard Ecuador is affordable. Peru is another place that's affordable. But uh, Colombia is just so nice. Guatape. I would like to show you guys the... uh, Let me see if I can get on to Guatape. I I would say uh, you don't need to go to... Bogota, unless you're arriving there. Bogota is like Manila. You arrive there and you leave. Uh, I've, al- I've also heard people get knives pulled on them there. So not exactly a place that I'm going to recommend. Whereas uh, Medellin, I found to be more affordable. I'm not a big fan of Cartagena. Um, not just is it a hard hard city to pronounce. Cartagena, Cartagena. <laughs> but uh, I just wasn't that impressed. Anyway, this is Guatape, and there's the, the mountain here. This is the spot that I was telling you about. See how it's on this lake? I, I was like, man, I've never been a, to a more beautiful place, really. I was so impressed with how beautiful this, uh, this atmosphere was. But that's the place. That's the big rock. But they, they have a bunch of um, hiking that you can do around here in these lakes. Just they say when you go there, don't talk about Pablo Escobar because it's kind of uh, it's gotten to a point where they don't actually want to talk about it. RC's right; it is the Olmec. Uh, the cartel, um, the cartel in where in Colombia or where? Yeah, there's cartel in Mexico, but not too much in uh, Colombia anymore. So now we're gonna move over to Europe. So Europe is a place where you can actually get some cheap travel. Now, most of this area in the middle, Central Europe, super expensive. France, Germany, Netherlands, and then the further north you go into Europe, it even gets more expensive. Norway, Stockholm, Finland, you know, and and the Scandinavians, they love to brag about how much taxes they pay. What's going on, Salvador? Nice to see you. Um, Oh, you're in Mexico, you lucky man, you're lucky. I want to get down there to Baja. I love the Baja. I also like uh, Puerto Vallarta, the, the, the towns north of Puerto Vallarta, like Sayulita. It's just, you know, you can just really relax, eat good food, chill out, just, you know, swim in the ocean and just really relax. That was, that's that's another place. Zihuatanejo. If you haven't gone down to uh, Zihuatanejo, then I recommend it. Zach M says, bro, you're crazy. Central or Mexico and South America trip me out more bad travel experiences than ones coming from those places. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy down there. It can trip you out. I, I don't know if you've been down there or if you're just going off what you saw on the TV. But, um, you know, it's it's funny. My favorite place is Southeast Asia or Asia. And I've had more, more crazy things happen in China. That's not Southeast Asia. But China was one place where I definitely, like, walked away kind of hobbling, limping out of there. Like China will set you straight. That was one place on planet earth I've been where I was kind of like, whoa, man, man, I'm out of there. I like, I felt like I was escaping to Tokyo. I went to Beijing. I went to Shenzhen. I went to Guangzhou. China just really kind of, it's a tough one. But so what you're talking about, the way you explain uh, Latin America is how I would feel about China. What's going on, uh, Nicholas Jackson? 39 people watching, 16 people crushing up the likes. You guys are doing great today. Thank you to everyone who liked the video. All right. Um, yes, I've been to Puerto Penasco. Puerto Penasco is in Rocky Point. Um, it's it's a good place. The Sea of Cortez is extremely warm. It's a great place to swim. It's at that crystal clear water, though, so you can't see what's underneath you. And they do have great whites out there with stingrays and other unique things in the water. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. But if you were looking to go down to Mexico... I don't know where you're located, man. So, like, you must be in Arizona, Benzie, because if you could fly down to Mexico, I would either go to Zihuatanejo, the airport's called Ixtapa, Ixtapa Zihuatanejo, or um, it's, they say it's in Guerrero. I don't know. There's a travel advisory for Guerrero because of Acapulco. Like, every time I was in Zihuatanejo, they were always saying, I was like, can I go to Acapulco? And they were like, I don't know if I'd recommend Acapulco. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, let's talk about Europe, but yeah, Rocky Point is great. I mean, I'd go down there. It's just having to cross the border is always such a stressful situation for me. Um, I don't know what the deal is with those border crossings. (laughs) It's easier to just fly in, but
But then again, processing immigration in Mexico City is not what's up. Don't go to Mexico City and process immigration. I stood in line for like two hours. Um, here we go. So in in uh, Europe, you have Bucharest, uh, Romania. So Romania is very affordable. Uh, if you're looking to go along the Black Sea here, this uh, Bulgaria to uh, Romania is a place that gets a lot of recommendations from Europeans. It's becoming more and more popular. They have like the Bulgarian Riviera, this Black Sea Riviera. The thing is, of course, you're going to be close to Russia. That gives a lot of Westerners uh, anxiety, but I would say don't wor worry too much about that. Uh, I've tra Most of the places I traveled had a lot of Russian tourists, and I never had any problems with any Russians uh, while traveling. I mean, Thailand had so many Russian tourists. Bali had a ton of Russian tourists when I was there, and I didn't have any problems with Russians. So going to Bulgaria, going to Romania, I would say don't worry too much about it. Uh, but I could see why someone would care. I mean, I went to Istanbul, which is another place. This is how I was finding out about uh, Bulgaria and Romania was when I was in Istanbul, they were trying to tell me, go up to the Bulgarian Riviera, this whole area right here. And I guess it's just like a place where a lot of the mafia, the Bulgarian mafia goes there. Anyways, I'm not going to get too much into all that, but uh, I don't want any problems, you know, <laughs> with uh, those guys. But this area, Greece, right here, man, I found some affordable accommodation in Greece. And some of the islands can be really affordable, and then some of the islands can be super expensive. For example, if I go to Santorini, $200 to $300 a night for a hotel in Santorini on in the summertime. Okay, that's not a very good accommodation for that price. You can find maybe something for $100, but I'm not going to call it affordable. But I did find affordable accommodation on places like Naxos, Paros. If you go to these smaller islands, uh, Mykonos is probably, between Mykonos and Santorini, very expensive, both of those. But you can find some of the off-the-beaten-path Greek islands, which are cool. Uh, I would go there and recommend those. RC, you're an Olmec. Nice. It says, actually, to be specific, we're the Toltecs. Okay. Yeah, I would love to learn more about the Olmecs and uh, the Aztecs and all that. Every time I go down there, I'm always talking to the uh, locals. And, you know, they'll tell you if they're indigenous or not. So that's, a, that's an awesome experience. That's why I love Mexico. Talk. It's honestly the, the best part of Mexico for me is talking to the indigenous. It's not really in the big cities. So getting out there and talking to the indigenous people. They're not in cartels. They're 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 normal people. They're they're just like that's why I love Guatemala cuz the indigenous people, the Mayans. I mean, you go down to Guatemala, you're going to just feel so happy that you're around the Mayan people. Like I went through a market with the Mayans and they were just so friendly. But you go into the big cities, it's dangerous. You know, they'll tell you. You'll see the people, the, the security guards with guns and stand out there with shotguns and rifles and stuff. And, you know, you're like, is it safe here? I mean, why is that guy standing outside the gas station with the shotgun? But you go into the villages where the Mayans are. I mean, we're talking very grounding experience. When I say grounding, it's like very down to earth. You're feeling very at peace. And then you go back into the technological world of the downtown big city centers. And you're just like, your anxiety starts rising. <laughs> Anyways, so we've just talked about Greece. We talked about Bulgaria. We, Albania is also affordable. Uh, the best one, in my opinion, in this area is Montenegro. I would go back to Montenegro. Everyone's, everyone's really recommending these days to go to Croatia. But if I had to pick again, uh, if I was to go on a vacation, I would say just go to Montenegro. And people think Montenegro is dangerous. It has bad rap, but I didn't see any problems in the whole Balkans area. The, I didn't have any. The only place where I heard a little bit of craziness was Albania. And then when I went down, because I was going into Albania and I was kind of nervous because, like, my driver from Montenegro was saying, Oh, you got to be careful in Albania because I went to Tirana. You guys, I don't know who's been following this channel, but some of you have seen these videos, right? Where I was in Albania and walking around. When I was making that video, I was being told by like locals, Oh, be careful. Someone will steal your camera and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I was believing it because I was like, why would he just say that? <laughs> but as I went around Toronto, I started, to, I definitely started to feel more at ease. But Montenegro, I felt way more relaxed in Montenegro than Albania. But Albania is also nice. Um, and then there's Greece, which is, in my opinion, the Greek islands are some of the safest places you can go in the world. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and say that Latin America is the safest place. Although I think many people go to Latin America without any issue. Uh, Turkey is another place that's affordable. 
Uh, some of these beach towns along the Turkish Riviera here, very beautiful. You have basically Alanya, kind of expensive. You have Antalya, can get expensive, but I still found an affordable accommodation in Antalya. And then you have Kos and you have Aludeniz, which is a very beautiful place, as you can see. I mean, whenever you get a place that looks that cool, right? You're like, whoa, what is that place? Well, that's Aludeniz. That's in Turkey. Turkey is amazing. Uh, then they have Fedayi. And if you go further around here, they have some other towns like Bodrum. And they have some islands like Kos right here. So Greek islands in Turkey, Turkish Riviera, you spend a month and a half or, or two months doing it, I would do it in the shoulder season. I would do it right April, May, or September, October. And if you do it that during that time, you're going to find the best prices. I would avoid the peak season of the summer. Winter's too cold to really enjoy that area. Like, believe it or not, those Greek islands get really windy and cold. All right. So other places that are really affordable that have come up as popular travel destinations. Thank you to everyone who's already hit the like button, by the way. Crypto Greg, I live in Mexico and love it here. See, Greg lives in Mexico and loves it. So you've got people who are saying, don't go to Mexico. And then you've got people who are saying, I live here and I'm loving it. <laughs> That's been my experience. I love Mexico. So uh, I don't have a, I don't have anything really bad to say about it. I mean, I would say you got to exercise some caution. I'm not just going to say go in there and just do whatever the heck you want because you can't. <laughs> uh, but you got Georgia is a place that's come up. But people were telling me go to Armenia. I kept hearing about that. Um, so Armenia, Georgia, even Azerbaijan. And then there's an area of the world that I'm not too familiar with that I want to explore. And it's Kazakhstan. Uh, they've also got Almaty, which is a capital of Kazakhstan. I've, I've been wanting to go there for a while. It's, it's actually way more built up than you would ever imagine. It's like this place you've never heard of that's like kind of a wealthy place. Uh, so Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, they're not the highest on my bucket list, but because I've been to 71 countries, I'm running out of popular places to go. So now I have to go off the beaten path. And that's going to include these kind of countries like Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, not Afghanistan. I'm not quite, I'm not quite feeling it yet. Um, but those are all fairly affordable places. Uh, I would say go to Mongolia, but I don't have the data for you about Mongolia yet. Um, but my friend, he wants to go there. Now, <clears throat> Nepal is another place on this list. So you've got Nepal and then uh, Sri Lanka. We already talked about India. So Sri Lanka is basically an extension of India. I mean, it's, it might as well just be India because even India is made up of so many different regions. Like Rajasthan is so much different than Goa and Mumbai and Delhi and Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. I mean, Sri Lanka is basically, it might as well just be India, to be honest with you. But that might upset someone if I, if I, if the wrong person heard that. So I'm, I'm just saying that's how I personally view the geography of the situation. Now, here we go in Africa. One of my favorite destinations that's on my list right now is Tanzania. Uh, everyone I've talked to who's gone to Tanzania has had a positive experience interacting with the local people, the Swahili and they go to Dar es Salaam. Now I've heard the airport can be a bit tense, but then you got Zanzibar and the way to get out to Zanzibar, I guess, is by ferry boat. I don't really know of another way to get out to Zanzibar, but Zanzibar is very popular these days. But there's two things you can do. There's three things you can do in Z uh, Tanzania and it's not gonna be too expensive. So you have go to the beaches in Zanzibar, go on a jungle safari or a savanna safari in the area known as the Serengeti, and then they have Mount Kilimanjaro. Now let's see, where's Mount Kilimanjaro? There's Matumbo, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. What a cool name, right? Anyway, let's see if we can find it. Oh, yeah, I mean, Mount Kilimanjaro is an amazing, it's way up there in the north, almost in Kenya, almost. And I think this is like around the headwaters for the Nile River. I'm not sure exactly where the Nile River begins, but you could probably trace it all the way up into here towards Lake Victoria, somewhere around here. Uh, so the Nile River obviously is one of the biggest rivers in the world. I think it is the biggest river in the world, that and Amazon. 
DJ Polly Wood says, I'm going on a six month road trip tour in a couple months, starting in Miami to San Jose, then clockwise around the country with a convoy stopping in 14 cities. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, road tripping around the country, it makes you feel better about America because when you sit at home, uh, you know, watching the news in America, you might think that everything's going, going downhill. But then when you start going around the country, you're like, hey, friendly people, friendly people, nice people, nice people, good vibes, good vibes, good food, okay. America's okay. But if you watch the news, I mean, you think everything's going down. I don't know what the deal is with the news. It's like the news people must be extremely depressed or something. But yeah, so Tanzania and then Namibia is another place. South Africa, I've not heard the greatest reviews about. Uh, even from people from South Africa, they just don't give it the best reviews. A place I would like to go is Madagascar. Uh, I've heard that's very aff affordable. And so we've covered basically most of the list. Uh, one place in Europe that we didn't really talk about that I should probably recommend is going to be Portugal. In terms of Western Europe, Portugal is one of the more affordable places. Another place that's actually fairly affordable is Southern Italy, like uh, Sicily. Basically, once you go south of Rome, Naples is affordable. Bari, S Southern Italy is actually good pricing. Um, Zach says, how do you communicate with the locals from non-English country? Well, you'd be surprised how many people speak English. But when they don't, which is also very common, I mean, it's about 50-50 in most places, especially if they work in travel, you know, like as a driver or whatever, they'll speak some form of English. But I use, uh, what is it, um, Google Translate. Google Translate is a tool that has so many different options, you can actually have them speak into it. You just got to make sure it's, let's just say you're in Thailand, you'll set the setting to Thai, and then you'll push the speaker button, and they'll just speak into it. They don't even have to type. So you don't have to change the phonetics because, you know, Sanskrit is different than English or Russian is different than English. Uh, there's a lot of different, the way they do the calligraphy, Chinese or Korean or Japanese. But overall, I would say that um, that's how you do it. You can have them speak into it and then you can speak into it. And believe it or not, they even have like a, a way for it to speak. So it, it'll actually speak it. What I do is I'll turn up the volume and I'll put it right next to their ear while they're driving and it'll sound off exactly what I'm asking and they'll understand me. Sometimes even if my Spanish is not quite correct, uh, you know, I don't, I don't quite have the correct uh, pronunciations. They don't know what I'm saying even though I'm trying to say something. <laughs> like I, I've had that happen with cities. I'll, tr I'll be trying to pronounce a city in France, for example. Lavour, or Lavour, or whatever it's called. I still don't even remember what it's called. Louvre. I called it Louvre, but it's Louvre or something like that, <laughs> you know. And so you say Louvre, and they're like, huh? And, and, and then you s type it into Google Translate, and it gets it right, and then that problem is solved. Um, how hard is it to get the China visa nowadays? I haven't tried to get the China visa. That's a good question. Last time I got a China visa, it took three days. It cost me about $300 or $400, uh, and they they took my passport for like three days. That was kind of, I didn't, I'm never comfortable when someone takes my passport. But they took my passport and then they put a big, huge China. I probably have it here still, but they put a big China visa thing on there. I don't know. Let's see here. I just show. I'll just show you. Oh, kind of like what Vietnam did. I just want to cover up any specific numbers. Like this, I mean, it's basically like a full page, but China did the same thing. I don't know where my old passport is. They take up a full page. <laughs> I had to get the I had to get the big passport though that has like uh, I think fifty one pages now. My old my old passport I got full. It got full. I've got too many stamps. That's another thing about traveling Europe. You can go in between the countries here, and you don't have to get stamp, stamp, stamp every time you cross. Like if you go from Belgium to Germany, you don't even know you're crossing. It's like crossing a state line. They barely even have a sign that says "Welcome to Germany." Uh, you go to France, you know, you're just crossing all these countries, and you're not having to process immigration or getting stamps. The only time, the only time you have to get a stamp is when you enter the Shenzhen region. So when, wherever you arrive in Shenzhen, and then wherever you Shenzhen or whatever it's called, you depart. For example, I arrived in Amsterdam at Schiphol, and then I departed out of Naples. 
So I got a stamp in Schiphol and I got a stamp in Naples and I saw 15 countries. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm never a big fan of like if a hotel or someone asks to take my passport, like there's about two things. No, there's three things when I'm traveling that are my most important things on me. I'd say four. I'll give you the three first and then the fourth one. First thing is my passport because without that, man, the second thing is my cell phone because without that, how am I going to book my flights, do anything without my cell phone? Third thing is my computer. And then my fourth thing is my wallet. Believe it or not, my cell phone is more important to me than a wallet. <laughs> Nowadays it is. But the most important thing is always the passport. So anytime someone's playing with any of that stuff, my, my so I always try to keep that those those two things mainly the passport and uh, the cell phone. Those are high security items for me. Um, Mukhtar says same as Nigeria visa. It took me two weeks to get my passport back. Yeah, so you're going to China from Nigeria and they took your passport for two weeks. Were you in Nigeria when they took it or were you um, like in Asia? Because the problem is, is when you're traveling. Like, so I was in, I was in Hong Kong, which is part of China. But the thing is, every time you check into a hotel, they always want to stamp your passport or they always want to see your passport. So if you don't have your passport around, there's some things you just can't do because some things require a passport, like checking into a hotel or getting on a ferry boat to say go to Macau or cross the border to go to Shenzhen. So that's that that right there was an inconvenience. But you know, the, the, I don't know why they don't just make everything with the travel documents digital completely, including the passport. Like this fact, the fact that we have to have this little paper uh, book to travel in 2023 is kind of ridiculous. Even an ID card, a driver's license to me is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, like some of the countries, I should make a video at some point in time. This is something that I've wanted to tell you guys, but there's it doesn't seem like anyone's really interested in the subject, even though they should be. It's processing immigration into these countries because there are some countries that just like to mess with you. And like, I, I know that sounds a little bit cliche or a little bit like over overly dramatic, but I will tell you the countries that where the immigration officers like to play games, I will tell you. Egypt. This was something that was very common in Egypt. Uh, I'm not going to say they don't let you in, but they like to kind of like drag it out and question you and question you and go through your bags and really like kind of like, oh, we got to take that. Like I had more things confiscated in Egypt than I had anywhere else. And we're talking things like nose scissors with rounded edges, not nose scissors with pointed edges, but nose scissors with rounded edges like you're allowed to carry with TSA compliance. Um, uh, these kind of charging cables, getting those confiscated because they don't know what it is. Uh, because I, I mean, I still don't know why they confiscated some of the things that they confiscated. They confiscated my buddy's drone, which I could understand. I mean, we kind of understood that one, but I mean, we went to like what fifteen countries, no problem with the drone. But of course, Egypt needs to take the drone. They also need to know what kind of cameras we had. So Egypt, I'm just telling you. Those guys, every time at the airport, were always messing with us. Another place where they like to mess with us, a place that we did put on this list, India. Those guys, they did mess with us also. So I don't know what it is about India and Egypt with their immigration officers playing games with people, but um, they're like, they act like, they make you feel like you're doing something wrong by coming to their country. Because you would think, hey, Tourism, like that's an industry. You would you would think that you would want to invite tourists to come to your country. And it wasn't like it was just a one-off rogue person, right? It was pretty consistent um, with, I don't know if there's a little bit of this like, hey, we want to make some money off these guys. So we're going to kind of see if we can do that. Um, I don't know what it was. But places where I didn't have problems crossing immigration, Thailand. Thailand's always just, those guys, that's why they're like one of the leaders for travel. Um, Thailand was pretty good. Always going into Europe is easy, except for if I'm going into the UK or Ireland. UK and Ireland, they like to pick on people also. I don't know what it is with the UK and Ireland. But then again, I come from the United States, so people are always like, oh, that's funny, an American saying that immigration is difficult. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Because remember, American America, how we are with immigration. <laughs> it really humbles you, right, when another country kind of checks you and you start to think like, well, I don't really feel like I'm doing anything wrong. And then you think like, 
well, why are we harassing people who are coming into our country? It kind of puts things into perspective, right? And it makes you it makes you more aware of it, right? Another place that was real smooth sailing to get in was UAE, uh, Dubai. Du- Dubai is like, boom, you're in there. Dubai is a very efficient city all the way across the board. But that's United Arab Emirates. That's a whole country. Abu Dhabi, I would say, what Abu Dhabi seemed like it was a different country from Dubai. It's like, are you sure these are two different, two, the same countries? Because over in Abu Dhabi, they're very strict. I found some cheap accommodation in Dubai, like forty dollars a night in Dubai, pretty consistently, um, and that was in September. Um, Tanya says, in terms of government or authorities, I'm talking about immigration uh, officers. Tanya says, there are many bad reviews about visiting Egypt. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's It doesn't just stop at the immigration. It's It also continues when you're out in town. I'm, I had a good experience there, but even if I said, I just want to negotiate straight. Tell me how much it's going to cost me and we can do it. But it was always like, oh, but here's a tip. You owe a tip. And how much is the tip? Oh, no, no. You need to give more than that. Well, I thought we agreed that it was 200 bucks for the car and then it was $40 extra for tip. And then, oh, you know, all these different things come up. It's, it's, one, it's fine. It's fine. It, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's just, it's not like how I'm used to, right? It's like, and some people I could see how it would put them off wanting to go back uh, because of the games that are played. I didn't, I didn't have any problems going to Lebanon. Lebanon was pretty smooth sailing. I went to Beirut, and that was a place you would have expected some shenanigans. I went to Amman, Jordan. I didn't, I didn't get any shenanigans going in there. I did get hassled a bit crossing the border from uh, Jordan into uh, Israel, though. I definitely got hassled a bit for that. So that's Aqaba, and then going into Eliot, Elot. So right here is the border. But there's a, that I. I I don't have an opinion on that because that's a high tension environment. There really is a high tension environment because even when we took the the bus going from Elot to um, Jerusalem, this this road right here, it's called I think it's called the West Bank. This area of the world is called the West Bank, and I'm like online and I'm reading about like Israel's latest news, like shooting of a bus on the West Bank, and I'm like. I look over at my friend and I'm like, aren't we in the West Bank? And they're like, yeah, yesterday there was a bus shooting right here because it's, you know, it's like a highly contested area between Palestinians and Israel. I didn't, I, I knew about it. I hear about it on the news, but I didn't realize I was like right in the middle of the West Bank. And um, here's the West Bank right here. And then you have the Gaza Strip. But we just went Elat, Jerusalem, and then Tel Aviv. But I could, but those are, it's a high, high intensity environment there for sure. Qatar was great. I would recommend as well. Yeah, I think Qatar is another place that's going to be like Dubai. But I was trying to go to Qatar when I was there, and they were extremely strict with like testing regulations and 24 hours. And I was just, whenever they were doing that, like where it was like 24 hour window and then test when you're on arrival. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going to skip it. So I didn't go there, and I would like to go to Bahrain. Um,. Jane says, I got stuck in Djibouti airport. They didn't let me board my flight for Catania at Christmas. Said my visa expired. Asked $460 in, J- in DJ francs. How much is that in US? That was in Djibouti. Djibouti is what? Djibouti is uh, right here. That is in the country of... Is it Djibouti? Djibouti the country, right? What were you doing in Djibouti? That's an interesting place. Um, just because it's... I, the only reason I know of people going to Djibouti was military. Were you military? Um, anyway. So that's mostly our list of the most affordable places. Um, so, like I said, Tanzania. Kenya is another place that's on that list. Um, I am interested to go to Morocco, but I can't give you information on Morocco because I haven't quite been there. But I've Heard good things about Namibia. I've heard good things about Zimbabwe, Madagascar. Madagascar is also very beautiful. And then, you know, Seychelles is expensive. So I'm not, it's a beautiful place, but it's expensive. So, oh, you were, you went there for work. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, because I don't think many people go to Djibouti for, um, you like how I spelled it? I, I knew how to pronounce that one though. Because <laughs> most people, they'd be like, did Djibouti? But it's, uh, the, the D is silent. 
Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and everyone who hit the like button. We will see you on the next one. Thank you, Mictar Jabril. Rwanda is affordable and beautiful. Good information. Thank you, sir.